back for a minute on the best days of your youth. Remember the adventure of learning something new? Of those first friendships? When you think about it, these are the moments that made some of the biggest impressions in your life. Well, that's just what scouting brings to our young people. It's a program with a purpose, one that develops morals and ethics to create real character, and has been built on a foundation of supporting God, country, family, and self. The Scouting Movement is a champion of spiritual belief, supporting all major religions of the world and the concept of duty to God. We're also proud to be part of this country, continually promoting citizenship and patriotism in all that we do. United States of America. We enhance mental and physical fitness, not through random activities, but through well-orchestrated programs that have helped turn out some really great people over the years. Programs that bring lifelong skills and values to our youth. As a new leader or parent, you may be wondering how this all works. The Scout will participate in programs that we deliver through troop meetings and a lot of outdoor activities where he'll learn new skills, make new friends, and in the process, learn how to be a leader. These activities are guided by a scoutmaster who's supported by a troop committee and an entire organization of people who are dedicated to make scouting one of the best and most meaningful experiences of his life. It's definitely a boy-run program. The whole basis of scouting is youth and adults working as a team to make it all happen. The adults serve as the mentors and coaches to make sure each troop is geared toward the interest and the needs of the boys. If you're a new leader, please know you've got a lot of help available to you. Unit commissioners, like me, have been trained to help you along the way. And we're here to make your role a little easier. We've created this tape to give you a fast start, a quick orientation to get you ready for your first meeting. We'll give you a brief overview of the seven parts of a troop meeting. Then we'll talk about how to conduct an outdoor program. And last, we'll have a brief overview of the troop committee and how it relates to the troop. This tape is your starting point. At the end of every section, we'll let you know where you'll go next and what materials will enable you to run the troop. Basic training is the next step, but it doesn't stop there. There's always something new to learn, even for an experienced scouter like me. <laughs> and believe me, it's worth it you'll be helping to build a better world. You may already know the Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty, to guide my country, and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Imagine how great the world would be if everyone lived up to the Scout Oath. It begins with you. Let's get started. Tomorrow is the big night. Uh, my first troop meeting. Just me, an assistant, and the guys. You sound a little concerned. Oh, no, no, not at all. Well, maybe a little. It's ridiculous, really. I deal with people all day, but I've got to look good in front of my son and his friends. You see, everyone feels this way when they're first starting out. It's not just you. You'll be fine. But remember, you don't carry the entire load. You've got a troop committee, an assistant, and the boys plan the program. That's good advice. So it, this is a, a team or a troop effort. Absolutely. Now for the big picture, troop programs are planned at an annual program planning conference with your senior patrol leader and the other patrol leaders. Each month, troop meetings are planned at monthly patrol leader council meetings. Now, scouting is a boy-run program. You as scoutmaster coach the boy leaders to run a boy-led troop. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Don't worry. Today, we'll take a look at the seven steps of a troop meeting by watching a real meeting in action. And we'll talk a little bit about each step and about the patrol method. Great, that's all I'll need. Then I'll be ready to go. To your first meeting. Now, this is just the start of your training. It'll take some time and effort to become a good scoutmaster, but it'll be worth it, I guarantee it. Looks like they're getting started. They're just playing a game. When the boys arrive, your patrol leaders will have decided on something for them to do. Well, 
planned activity before the meeting starts. It could be indoors or outdoors, but having an activity keeps them occupied in one place before you're ready to begin. This is step one of your troop meeting. It's called the pre-opening. Okay, it looks like everyone's here, Mr. James. We are ready to begin the opening ceremonies. Okay, Jake, go ahead and proceed. All right. That's the troop's senior patrol leader. Oh, the senior patrol leader is, uh, is my assistant then. Well, remember that the boys run the troop. Now, you work with them to provide the adult leadership. The real aim of scouting and the way the boys develop is training boys to be leaders. Now, take a look over there. You see how the boys are dividing up? They're getting into patrols, groups of about six to eight boys each. Every patrol elects a leader, and each boy has a responsibility within the patrol. Oh, and every patrol has a name. Uh, my son Joe's is the, the Cougar Patrol. That's right. Now, each patrol has its own identity with responsibilities for planning parts of the troop meeting. Uh. Each week, patrols have different assignments. When it's done right, every boy has a chance to do everything and be a leader. Oh, so they can find out what they're good at. And work on skills they need to improve all in a supportive environment. And since rank advancement depends on earning merit badges and leadership positions, a good troop has to have a variety of opportunities for both. <laughs> well, I got to talking so much, I almost forgot about the troop meeting. <laughs> you really get to see youth leaders in action. We've had the pre-opening. This is step two, the opening ceremony. It's a constant reminder of the scout oath, honoring God and country. Liberty and justice for all. So the opening ceremony is a formal way of getting things started. Well, it also reaffirms everything that the Boy Scouts and the troops stand for. I mean, think about it. The Boy Scouts is one of the few organizations where a boy actually takes an oath, makes a promise to live by a specific code. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law. So everything has a purpose. That's right. And weekly repetition reinforces the concept of values, ethics, and morals. Every meeting starts with the same opening to remind every boy and all of us of those values. It's all a part of the scout law. Brave, clean, and reverent. Well, those are more than just words. They're a way of life. Excuse me. Hey, what's the soccer kid doing here? Well, he's coming from his soccer practice to scouting. A boy doesn't have to choose between scouting and other activities. Most of these scouts play on sports teams or belong to other clubs. Whenever possible, though, try to make sure you and your assistants go to meetings in full uniform. And try to make sure the boys in the troop are doing the same. Ready to move on? Let's see. We've had our pre-opening, which was an activity, then the opening ceremony, and now we have what? Well, in the third part of the troop meeting, we have the skills instruction. Now, the skills instruction helps the boys learn the skill they need for advancement or prepare for an upcoming outing. And chances are everyone will be at a different level. So you might have one skill level for your new scouts and others for your more advanced boys. This troop has three different skills activities going on. That's how you safely light a butane cook stove. Outdoor cooking skills for the young scouts. If you know how to use a compass, you'll never stay lost for long. Let Shay show you how to use one. Using a compass for the intermediates. Having the right pair of boots is essential for some of the more difficult climbs we'll be doing. And climbing for the older boy. Three different skill levels. It's all in the program helps. All following the same methodology. First, you demonstrate. Then every boy has a chance to try the skill himself. Your harness right here. How long should a, a troop meeting take? I mean, I've been in meetings that have accomplished less than what this troop has already done. And <laughs> they've taken hours. Well, a well-planned troop meeting takes about 90 minutes. Every step is organized and started and completed on time. That's important. And the senior patrol leader pretty much runs it. With your help, everything's planned out before the meeting. Well, then my job's pretty easy once I have the senior patrol leader trained. Actually, the Scoutmaster's most important job is training youth leaders. And you'll have the Scoutmaster's handbook and junior leader training to help you do that. It looks like they're, they're done with the skills instruction and they're breaking off into groups. Well, they're getting ready for step four, the patrol meetings. Now, I can't overemphasize the importance of the patrol method. This is the formula that makes the scouts work. The patrols give the boys a sense of purpose, and it's a great way to delegate responsibility. 
Every week, one patrol is in charge of set up and tear down. One is in charge of the opening ceremony. Everyone plays a part. Okay, great job on the opening ceremony. Is everyone ready for next week's camp out? It's our responsibility to make arrangements for the canoes, PFDs, and pedals. Uh, are we all set? Well, my dad and Billy's dad are going to take their trucks to pick up the gear on Thursday after school. That's when my dad's Oh, that's right. Oh, we, we got the PFDs from the storage shed. It'll all be here Friday at 4.30. Great job. Has everyone turned in their permission slips? So that's step four, the individual patrol meetings. Well, boys don't like to sit still. <laughs> <laughs> By now, they're ready for some activity. So it's the perfect time for the inter-patrol activity. And that's... A game. Well, really more of a competition between patrols. Something interesting, but not too complicated. The True Program Resources has lots of games. This competition takes about 15 minutes or less. The goal is to reinforce scout skills and build teamwork to motivate the patrol members to work together to accomplish a goal. <laughs> it looks like fun. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> Okay, so we've had the pre-opening, the opening, the skills instruction, the patrol meeting, and the inter-patrol activity. Next is? The closing. And that's when you take center stage to impart some wisdom, to give a final bit of motivation during the Scoutmaster's Minute. You know, this morning seemed pretty routine. I got up, had breakfast with my family, got ready for work, got in my car and had no idea where my car key was. Well, I eventually found it and I got on my way. But I was struck by how powerful that little key had become. I mean, think about it. There I sat in this car with its V8 engine that would do nothing. Go nowhere without the help of that little key. One little thing could make all the mechanisms work or leave me stranded. You know, we're all really a lot like that key because we all have the opportunity to make an impact on everything around us. Every person and everything we do in life has the potential to help other people move forward to get where they need to be. It might be as simple as being kind to someone who needs kindness or helping a friend understand their homework assignment. You're getting them going in the right direction. Without people helping people, the world just doesn't work. And in this case, you guys are the key. Wow, <laughs> now I'm a little worried. I mean, I, I have no problem talking in front of people, but coming up with stories like that, that that's a gift. <laughs> Don't worry. We have a collection of some great Scoutmasters minutes in the True Program resource book. You don't have to write the message. You just have to believe it. That's what counts. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it looks like the meeting's over. Everyone's leaving. Well, the actual meeting is ending. Then I'm missing something. We've had the pre-opening, the opening ceremony, the skills instruction, the patrol meetings, the inter-patrol activity, and the closing. That adds up to six. You said there were seven steps to a troop meeting. And step seven is going on right now, after the meeting. The assigned service patrol puts the meeting room back in order. And you meet with the patrol leaders and your assistant scoutmasters to evaluate tonight's meeting and make sure you have everything in place for the next meeting. The weekly meeting is really the glue that holds the troop together. It sets the stage and prepares the boys to use their new skills on the monthly troop outing. Now, the outdoor experience allows the scouts to master these skills. Now, in that process, the boys interact with others to experience the deeper purpose of scouting, character, citizenship and personal and mental fitness. It's up to you to be prepared and get the right training. This was just a start. You can go on to complete your new leader essentials and Scoutmaster specific training as soon as possible. And Scouting Magazine comes out every month and it's filled with all types of programs, themes, really everything you need. It's a great resource. We'd also like you to come to the monthly roundtables where the other Scoutmasters in your area meet to discuss monthly program themes. 
In our district, that happens on the third Thursday of every month. Terrific. I'll mark that down. You can do this. It's all in the, the True Program resource book. You'll find just what you need for tomorrow night. This has been great. I can do this. I mean, being a Scoutmaster is going to be an adventure. I may have as much fun as the Scouts. <laughs>
Equipment. Transportation. Fill out a troop program plan that gives dates for the outing and the adults responsible for the troop. A troop program plan is available at the back of each troop program feature. Step six, use the patrol method. The Cougar Patrol over there um, has all their cooking uh, utensils ready. The patrol method is all about boys developing into youth leaders and teaching your scouts how to cooperate and work together. Delegation of responsibilities to patrols will be the framework for the success of your outdoor experience. It's your organization chart, your infrastructure. In every outing and during every troop activity, your scouts learn leadership by example. You and the boy leaders of your troop are role models for the future leaders in your troop. Your scouts will follow your actions just as closely, if not more so, than they follow your verbal direction. One word to describe boys leading a troop is uh, success. What's really important is actually seeing the boys grow up and taking charge and responsibility and be reliable. I've learned to lead through example um, by showing other people what to do. They definitely change. I know that I change quite a bit, but I think the boys, uh, uh, there's an astonishing change. As your troop gains experience, you can move on to high adventure activities, all still using the six planning steps. The outdoor program helps you and your scouts explore the wonders of nature. Test your abilities in the outdoors. Make new discoveries. Develop a camaraderie as all of your scouts learn to cooperate, work together, and see the world from a different perspective. That was great. You got a lizard? Okay, before I open up my hand, okay? So here's the tail. But it's up to you to make it happen. Prepare yourself and get ready for the greatest adventure of your life. Use your Scoutmaster's Handbook as a guide and involve your Assistant Scoutmaster, your Patrol Leaders Council, and your Troop Committee members. And make sure you complete the New Leader Essentials Training, the Scoutmaster Specific Training, and the Introduction to Outdoor Leader Skills. The Wood Badge for the 21st Century is focused solely on leadership skills. That's where you'll learn how to effectively lead your troop with skills you can apply to other areas of your life. You can find all kinds of ideas for outdoor activities in your Scout Handbook, Troop Program Resources, the Field Book, and Troop Program Features. And every month, Scouting Magazine is filled with themes and outdoor activities too. That's where you find the resources and suggestions. But you can find the excitement by taking your scouting skills out on the trail. Nature at its finest. Life at its finest. You'll share experiences with the boys that you'll all remember. You'll discover how nature and the outdoors create the perfect venue to instill the values of scouting, the spirituality, the patriotism, and the fellowship and you'll have some moments you'll never forget. Get ready, the adventure is just beginning. Thank you for being part of this tremendous scouting movement. If you haven't been involved with scouting for a while, you may think that the whole scouting movement revolves around the scoutmaster and the youth members. Well, the success of the troop depends on a lot of adult volunteers working behind the scenes to make it all happen. Every troop is operated by an organization that's been granted a charter by the National Council of the Boy Scouts of America. In this case, it's this community center. They give the boys a place to meet and make sure the scouting program is run correctly. The director of the center, or the institutional head, has assigned her assistant as a chartered organization representative. That's her over there, Barbara Simon. She's at most every troop committee meeting. Now, every troop and every scoutmaster is supported by a troop committee that handles the business end of running the troop. Those are the folks you see behind me. Today, they've got a new treasurer coming on board, and he should be arriving right about 
Hi, I'm not late, am I? <laughs> well, you're right on time. Okay. So are you ready for your first troop committee meeting? Honestly, no. I mean, I really want to get involved, and I was really flattered when they thought of me, but I'm not really sure where I fit in all of this. I was never even a Boy Scout. I wanted to be, but I'm not even sure how a troop committee works. Now, I know Barbara Simon and my son Michael just love scouting, but that's about it. I can't even tie a square knot. Well, you weren't recruited for your camping skills, and rarely does the treasurer have to tie knots. Now, I think the fact that you're an accountant makes you a great choice for the job. Well, okay, now budgets I can handle, but can you tell me a little bit about the committee before we go into the meeting? Let me explain it to you this way. The troop committee is a lot like a steering committee or a service club committee. Now, Roger Banks is a committee chair, and no one is better at time management. Every month, he's got a specific agenda to move the meeting along. All right, uh, the next item is our community service project. I think we can all be proud of that one. Uh, the boys passed out 7,000 American flags at the big game last Saturday. I mean, we really appreciate you letting us use the center buses for the boys, Barbara. We were glad to do it. It was a great event. And Cheryl, I've got to commend you on getting all those flags donated. The banner company was really helpful. I met the president at the Chamber of Commerce meeting. I think we can count on his organization to sponsor some more activities in the future. And he's pretty well connected. I think he'll be an excellent resource for the troop. Cheryl's in charge of finance. That's typically the fundraising part of the committee, creating the events that raise money to support the troop's programs. And my job is budgeting and allocating the money she raises. Right, but for this community service project, she arranged for a sponsor to donate flags instead of cash. After all, it was kind of a special event. Oh, it sounds great. Well, this is the committee that got the elements in place to make it all happen. That way, the Scoutmaster can focus totally on the troop and its activities, but the boys really run the program. Is the Scoutmaster a member of the committee? No, he's here to talk about the upcoming programs. John's a terrific Scoutmaster. You like him a lot. His troop has come a long way. He's brought his senior patrol leader with him to talk about the troop's next month's camping trip. After all, it is a boy-run troop. Next month, the troop is planning a three-day trip to Magic Island. Yeah, the guys are really pumped. Uh, the patrol leaders are working with the patrols to plan the menus and secure all the necessary equipment. Then we're going to need life jackets for everyone there. First aid kits, helmets. How many people are going? Sheila is responsible for equipment, making sure the boys have everything they need for a safe and fun activity. Now, she's been on the committee for a few years, and she'll probably be the next committee chair. 22 scouts so far, and the deadline's Friday. We've got all the permits, and the parents know the drop-off time. Are you going to need some vans for transportation? Actually, a lot of the parents have volunteered to drive, so we're covered. Uh, but thank you, Barbara. What about lifeguards? Yeah, actually, we could use one more. My oldest son is certified and would probably love to go. Let me check with him and get back with you on Monday. Yeah, that'd be great. So, is it in the budget? Well, they're set, but that's exactly what your job's going to be. Making sure the funds are available to pay the bills. The structure's already in place, and it looks like you understand a little bit more about your job than you think. I've talked to a lot of the parents. They seem to be really excited about our upcoming programs. I think we can even get more of them involved this year. The troop has grown so large that we could use another assistant scoutmaster. Jorge is the committee's secretary, and he also works with the scoutmaster to present the programs to the parents. He publishes a newsletter each month to keep them in the know. And it's all about communication and involvement. He's been on the committee since his son was a Weebelos. Well, I have some good news from the troop scribe. We set a troop record for merit badges this last month. You guys have done an exceptional job. Raymond is in charge of advancement, where the boys get recognized for their accomplishments. He started out working with some of his son's friends to earn merit badges. He's a real outdoorsman, and ended up in charge of advancement. He handles the Board of Review and the Court of Honor. He's done a super job, and made the guys feel like they've really accomplished something when they earned the rank. But a boy in the troop keeps the records. The boys run the troop. The troop scribe keeps records of everyone who earns merit badges. He also collects the dues. Then he'll turn them over to you. Now you might be wondering what my role is with this troop. Well, I'm the unit commissioner and represent the local Boy Scout Council. My job is to provide whatever special coaching may be needed to help your troop succeed. I also help Cub Scout packs and venturing crews in our district. Okay, last order of business, the vacant treasurer position. We've got someone coming in with great qualifications. Well, he's supposed to be here tonight. 
Jim Reynolds, Joe's dad. He works for an accounting firm, outstanding guy. He's a neighbor of mine. He's my accountant, and let me tell you, he doesn't miss a detail. Looks like you're on. You ready? Let's do it. I'd like you all to meet Jim Reynolds, the new treasurer. I thought he could sit in on the rest of the meeting. Of course. <laughs> well, you can see a great troop doesn't just happen. It takes your involvement and your skills, along with other concerned adults, to make it all happen. But like anything else, exceptional troop committees start with training. From here, you'll have the opportunity to participate in the New Leader Essentials training program, where you'll get a general understanding of Cub Scouting, Boy Scouting, Varsity Scouting, and the Venturing Program, the entire scouting family. Then you'll learn more about your role as a committee member by playing the Troop Committee Challenge. As you become more involved in scouting, you'll be offered a variety of learning opportunities that can positively affect many areas of your life. Your district training team can let you know when these programs are available. They're there to help you in any way they can. Now, it won't be long until you're on your way, really making a difference, working with some really nice people, and helping to shape a better world through scouting. We're really glad you're here.